All right, I wanted to make a video to show how the stage one control panel goes together. Um, so this will just be a quick kind of basic overview of how it works, how to set up the airlines going to and from it, and uh, basic assembly of the, of the, the panel itself. Um, usually when you receive this from us, it'll already be assembled, but in some cases we've had to ship the gauges separately from the, the rest of the panel. So uh, if that's the case, just start from scratch here with just the panel and all the individual components. Um, so here's the basic guts of, of the system. You've got the, the stainless steel panel, obviously. Uh, you've got four of these paddle valves, uh, which if you look on the back, when they're held right side up, you have two lines or two fittings. Uh, one says Dell and one says SUP. Dell is delivery, which means out to the bags, and SUP is supply, so that's from the tank. So you want to make sure when you put these into the panel that the lettering's right side up. So these just snap in, just like that. So again, right side up, which will have the fittings sitting to the left side. One thing people have asked is, so we've got a line going from the tank and we've got a line going out to the bag. Where does the air go when you let the air out of the bags? And if you look on the back here, let me see if I can get, make sure I'm lined up on the, the camera here. There's a hole right there in the back of the, the actual valve. And that's where the air actually bleeds out of the bags from when you dump this down. Um, so the first couple times using your system, when those, those bags are brand new, uh, you may notice a little bit of that uh, airbag smell, kind of like new tires. Um, as the bags kind of get used a little bit more, you won't notice that smell. Um, but something you might have to, to consider when you first uh, get the system set up. So now that we've got those installed, the next step is putting the gauges in. And those are held in with just a real basic strap and two nuts. I use a 3 8 nut driver. Um, so we just slide that right onto the panel, kind of get it lined up. We can kind of center or you know, level it out once, the, uh, once everything's tightened down. But at least for now, we want to get it sort of set in. So snug those down a bit and then just kind of clock it a little bit so that they're they're lined up you don't want crooked gauges all right just drop that in there and get those those airlift logos or if you got different gauges you know whatever logo lined up so that's the basic assembly so now what we need to do is connect all of the airlines to this to get it run out to your you know, from your tank and to your bags so the basic gist of this is we're gonna have two lines coming in from the tank and those are gonna split out so we'll give you a bunch of T's here so we're gonna have two lines coming and those are our supply. So we're gonna split those and we'll have four lines of supply from the tank, right? And those are all gonna to go to the supply ports on the back of this panel. Um, now what I recommend, and we, we show this in the instructions and kind of mention it, but I wanna make it real clear. If you take one tank feed and split it to both fronts or both rears and you go to hit both of your front, most people lift the front and then they lift the rear of their car to drive. If you hit both fronts and they're both sharing that one little quarter inch line, it's gonna be slow. I mean, it's gonna be slow regardless. These are small valves and it's small airline, but it'll be even slower. Now, if you take that one feed line and split it and do it to one front and one rear, then when you hit the fronts, It'll be, it'll be getting a feed from two lines. So it'll get twice the flow, if that makes sense. Let me break it down. I'll, uh, 
me cut some line and start uh, start this process and I'll kind of show you what's up. If you don't have one of these line cutters, get one. They're on our website, they're pretty cheap. They're on everyone's websites and they're pretty cheap and they make life so much easier. They do such a nice clean cut. You really want to have a, a clean, you don't want to use dikes and you don't want to use, you can use a utility knife, but it's kind of hit and miss. And especially if you're like in the trunk of a car trying to get that last piece cut or whatever, it can be kind of a pain in the butt to, to get it, it cut exactly right. Uh, so these line cutters just make life a whole lot easier. All right, so I'm gonna start by just cutting a few lengths of about, and eh, we'll start out at about six inches. We try to give you, I mean, we give you 100 feet of this airline, it should be more than you, you end up needing uh, for your whole car. So don't be afraid to cut things a little bit long and then you can trim them down as you, uh, you know, as you kind of tighten everything up at the, the end of the installation. So, this will be the, the boring part of the video that I hopefully will edit out for your sake. All right, so here's our four lines and we're gonna connect those to SUP. Now these barb fittings, we've got a couple little barbs on them and what they do is they, they slide on and then they won't pull off. It grabs in pretty, pretty well. Let me see, am I in the video? There we go, hopefully. So as gross as this is, the best way I've found to get these on is just to kind of spit inside this line a little bit. Um, I've heard of guys using you know, silicone lube or whatever. I never know where my can is. I know where my spit is pretty much all the time. So I'm gonna do that off camera here and just kind of put a little spit on there. And then we just kind of work it on and you'll see, it just slides in. So you wanna make sure it's all the way up to the, the base of the fitting so that it gets a nice tight seal. And I'm gonna do that for all the, the sups. We're doing all the, the bottom fittings right now. I found wiggling it back and forth, it kind of grabs the, the edge of the barb as you go and makes it install a whole lot easier. All right, so there's our sups. You can see like this line's been sitting curled up for a while, so it's got a little bit of a curve to it, but it's not a big deal. We just don't want to, to angle it too hard and have it kink. Uh, that's the only, only thing you want to watch out for when you're doing this is you don't want to kink any of these lines. All right, so now we've got these mini barb tees. So what I normally do, so like I was talking about, we want one front and one rear for, the, uh, for each feed. So these are our fronts. If you look at it this way, we usually do, you know, left and right front, and left and right rear. So we want to take one of our fronts, and one of our rears, and we'll just keep it left and left just for the sake of, I don't know what. All right. So we're going to want to be somewhere about like that. We want to keep this compact. We want the lines coming in the center of the, you know, the panel so it's easier to hide everything. So we're gonna just trim about maybe an inch, inch and a half off of each of these just to kind of keep it a little, a little tighter. All right, so now we're just gonna connect these two together real quick with these mini barb tees. So same deal, some off camera spit. Don't wanna get demonetized. All right. And it's a little harder to get them all the way on. So I sometimes will use my nut driver and just grab the line so I can wiggle it on a little better. And we got it on. So by using that nut driver, you can kind of get a little more torque on the other side of the fitting versus using just your fingertips, which 
tear them up a little bit. All right, so. A little more spit. And this one's usually a little easier because we've got the other side lined to kind of work with. If our hands aren't sweaty. I don't know where you are, but we've got uh, 100 degree days happening right now. So even when we get out early in the morning, it still gets hot pretty quick. All right, so. Now we've got that one done. We're gonna do the, the other pair the same way. So just cut these lines a little shorter. And I'm staggering these a little bit just so they're not right on top of each other. Again, just so when we're Finishing up the install on this, we can get it tucked under the dash as cleanly as possible, or if you're putting this in a glove box or whatever, we just want to make it as easy as, as it can be to hide. There we go. back and forth wiggle kind of helps engage those barbs get them seated all the way in there all right so there's our supply side done we'll have two lines coming in from the tank and they'll go to these two lines so now if you had tank pressure on here when you hit up on any of these valves air will come through from the tank to these and it'll blow out of here so what we want to do from here is get these out to the bags right but we also wanna get the gauges hooked up. So what we're gonna end up doing is for each of these, we're going to have a line coming up and teeing again and going over to one of the ports on the gauges. So now it doesn't really matter which needle, you know, each of these gauges has two needles, one for left and one for right. It doesn't really matter whether red is right or red is left or whatever, as long as it's the same for the front and the rear. So we're just gonna pay attention to, you know, on this one, I think what we'll do is we'll take this left front and we'll make sure it goes to this gauge port, right? Sorry, out of, out of range again. We'll go from here to here. So we'll just make sure that our left rear is the same deal. We'll go to the, the left gauge port on the, the rear gauge. So let me cut some more airline here. We'll get this uh, next step going. So again, I'm just going to cut some some six inch six inch ish sections. And these will be for our for the back of the valves first. All right. So these are going to connect to our Dell ports on each of the uh, each of the valves. So again, super gross, but it works. You don't need to slobber on these things and make them super nasty, but and just kind of work a little bit of spit to the inside of it, and they go right on. All right. Wiggle and bada bing. All right, and once these are on, you can actually turn them a little bit because the barb is, you know, it's grabbing them already, so you're good to go. All right, and then we've got four ports coming off of here, so we need to cut some more airline and get those parts hooked up too. So I'm gonna just do six inch pieces again we don't need to be exact we're just kind of kind of winging it and if you end up needing extra line just holler at us this stuff is super super cheap 
um, and we can usually fit it into a, a small uh, postal, you know, priority box or, or pouch. So it's uh, don't be afraid to to pick up more line if you end up needing it. Now on these gauges, they actually only have one barb on them, so we just need to make sure we get over that barb. And you've, I don't know if you can really tell, but there's a little bulge where the line is over that. And I can vouch for these things at 250 PSI, which is higher than your system's gonna run. Never had an issue with a, a line coming off of these things. All right. Fourth. All right, now we got a mess of lines coming out, right? But all we need to do is just, what, I'm, what I like to do is I'll bring this, this guy over. Let me get this one out of the way. So this is the gauge port that we wanna connect this valve port to, right? So what I like to do is just sort of tee it over like this. So we'll run the T like this. And that way it just, it keeps this shooting straight out the back of the, the panel. It gets this over there without a real hard bend. Um, so it just ends up being the cleanest way I've found to, to get it all together. So what we kind of want to do is hold this line straight and this guy over here and sort of figure out where, where we want to cut that line. It should be right about here. So about like that. And then this guy for the T right here. All right. Perfect. All right. So more off camera spit. And I'm going to do this part off camera because I'm holding it up to my chest as I kind of wiggle it on. These T's are real small. They are sharp, <laughs> oops, and it can be a little bit of a pain getting that first one on. So I'm gonna wiggle that on the rest of the way after I get this other part of the T in. So again, a little bit of spit and get that thing started. I'm gonna grab this nut driver again and just the wiggle. There we go. All right. And now I can get at this a little bit better and get there we go. So there we go. We got one of our connections done. So then the same deal. We're gonna bring this one over. I'm gonna go a little higher with this one just to stagger it again, just kind of for the convenience of being able to get in there and get that, that fitting installed without having to worry about being in the way of the, the other ones. So, all right, turn a little off here. And all right. So glad I don't have the camera following that gross spit take action. Right. And then that one started. Bada bing. All right. So there's our front circuit is done. We've got the line coming in from the tank goes to the back of the valve. You hit this valve up. It's gonna let air out this line. It's gonna go out to the bag. And it's also gonna go to that gauge and read on the needle. So again, we'll do this for the rear. Remember we used the left and we went to the left. So we're gonna do the same here. Left, 
and we're gonna go to that left gauge port. We're just gonna come right over here. So right about there. To work out. There we go. All right, now let me plug it into there. You can see I got that one a little, little crooked. I went a little short on this. I could have gone a bit longer and over, but this will still work fine. It still keeps us behind the gauge panel, which is what's most important to me. All right, so last connection. I'll go a little longer on this one to be safe. All right. Definitely feeling it in the fingertips right now. One tip with this stuff, if it's cold out, try and leave it out in the sun, or if it's really cold out, leave it inside, like over by one of your heater ducts or something like that. The airline definitely gets softer and easier to work with when it's warm. Which is not a problem today. I don't know if you can see all that sweat on my arms. It's gross. We'll open up the shop and get the porta cool going real soon here, but I wanted you to be able to hear me, so couldn't have the fans going. All right, wiggle this last one in. Just give that one a little more. There we go. All right. So that's basically it. We've got all of our lines hooked up. So you've got two coming in from the tank. And then left front, right front, left rear, right rear bag. Run those lines out to those four corners, up to the tank, spray everything down with soapy water, check it for leaks. Um, that should be it. And then of course you've got a, a positive and negative hookup for your lights on the back of the gauges. It's nice to be able to see what your pressures are at night. But yeah, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, feel free to Put them in the uh, in the old doodly doos.